Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We've got yet another 1080p 24 inch $200 display to look at today. This one from Samsung. This is the CF390. And what sets this one apart from many of the others we have looked at is that it is curved. So uh, in the 21st century, the curved display is the new flat panel. When I was a kid, having a flat display was all the rage. Now it's about having the curves. But before we get into the review, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, all the Opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's get into this and see what this is all about. So Samsung promises greater immersion and a curvature that matches that of your eye. So I don't know, for me, it doesn't do all that much. It looks nice, but I don't know if it looks any nicer than perhaps a flat panel display would look. Although I think if you had two of these together, you can really have a nice curve to it uh, and get a, a nice uh, companion display for it that would uh, look pretty cool. Cool. But um, as a single display, it's fine. But I don't know if it adds anything more than uh, you would get if you didn't have the curved display. Although the price here is pretty decent. Now, this is a very nice display to look at when you are dead center. It's got a 3,000 to 1 contrast ratio, which is much better than what I've seen on other $200 displays recently at this resolution. Four millisecond response rate, so it might also be good for gamers for that. And the refresh rate is at 60 hertz on this display. It also supports AMD FreeSync, which works with AMD graphics cards that support that protocol. Uh, which means that the monitor and the graphics card will continually uh, stay in touch with each other and adjust game settings to keep your display flicker free. If you are on an NVIDIA card, you'll need to continue to uh, set those frame rates manually on your game, but on AMD, it will automatically adjust. NVIDIA does have a similar protocol, it just isn't supported on this monitor. Now, what's, what's interesting about this display is that this is running with what they call a VA panel, and that means it looks great when you've got it in its sweet spot, but when you go off center, you will very quickly lose contrast. So see what happens here as we move the display around? Uh, the image gets very washed out because it doesn't have uh, very good viewing angles when you are looking at it from the side. And uh, what you get though when you're looking at it in its sweet spot, dead center, is uh, very good contrast ratios, nice deep blacks and very little uh, backlight bleed, but you lose a lot when you're not looking directly at it. Now we looked at a Samsung television recently that is also running with a VA panel. I called it a one couch television. I call this a one desk chair monitor because it really does look great when you're dead center on it, uh, but it does drop off uh, pretty quickly from there. It feels like it sits up a, a little higher to me than some of the other displays I've looked at recently. There's no way to adjust it up or down. Uh, you do have some tilt angles to it though, so you can adjust the tilt on it if you uh, wanna try to get it to a better uh, position. But if you want, you can mount it to your wall. There is a base amount here on the back. This is the flattest part of the display here at the, uh, the, the, the bulk of the curve here. So you can uh, mount it up on something or even mount a computer to the back of the display if you wish. HDMI input over here, VG over here, there is an audio output. There's no speakers on the display, um, but it does uh, allow you to hook speakers up to it. I found when I hooked this up to my Mac earlier that the Mac thought the monitor had speakers and disabled its own internal sound. So if you plug your laptop into this and lose audio, you need to go into your settings and redirect it back to the laptop audio in order to hear it, or you can plug headphones or speakers uh, into that little port right there. And there's a control on the back here for controlling all of its display settings. Now, one of the things that I like about this display is that they have made some effort to uh, reduce some of the jagged edges you might see on a display of this size at this resolution. So typically when you've got a 1080p display and you're only sitting two or three feet away from it like you might at a desk, uh, you will see more jagged edges and uh, things that look a little more pixelated than you might on maybe a laptop screen running at the same resolution. Because if you're looking at a 13 inch display and packing this many pixels in there, it looks very sharp. But when you blow them up to 24 inches, uh, you begin to notice some of those uh, jaggedy things going on there. So they have a number of settings on here to uh, try to smooth out those things and make it look nicer. Uh, you have some black level settings. You can even adjust the response time by uh, making it slower. Believe it or not, you get a slightly better image quality. And that often comes though at the expense of input lag on games. So if I'm running Sonic the Hedgehog here and you can see just a very slight lag here as I'm pushing the button, not much, but it's there if you are very sensitive to that. But you can go into the picture settings here and uh, turn a game mode on, which disables all of that image smoothing. So you lose some of the uh, nicer image quality for your text and graphics, but your games run a lot better because you get rid of some of that lag that might be there. It's very minimal, um, but you can turn it off and use a game mode. And that's something I haven't seen on many monitors. It's on a lot 
lot of televisions, but not on many monitors. There's also a number of other settings you can adjust here too. You gotta turn that game mode off to get to them, but uh, all the standard stuff like brightness, contrast, and sharpness, but you can also adjust colors individually, uh, color, tone, gamma. Uh, so a good amount of settings on here for uh, getting the display just to where you want it to be. They also have a uh, thing called the eye saver mode, which uh, warms up the display slightly, makes it more yellow, uh, and it gets rid of some of the brightness. Uh, so if you are reading stuff in the dark and trying to get through a lot of text, and maybe you're working on a term paper in the middle of the night, uh, you can activate that mode to give you slightly less eye strain. It doesn't look as nice as it does on iOS, which has that similar mode where it yellows up your display. But I think if you're looking for a quick and easy way to reduce eye strain, you can activate that mode. And then when you turn it off, it goes back to where you were before. So that is the Samsung CF390. And the more I look at this, the more I like it. In fact, I'm probably going to rate this at the moment uh, the best display I have looked at this year. And it's not the curvature that's doing it. It's just how nice the image looks when you are dead center. And it really is a very sharp display with very, a very nice 3,000 to 1 contrast ratio, a great response rate for gamers. Uh, you've got uh, the AMD FreeSync built in and all that kind of stuff too. So very good for gamers. It does a nice job of smoothing out the image when you're not gaming so that if you are looking at text and graphics, it uh, certainly isn't going to be as nice as a 1440p or a 4K display at this size, but uh, it does compensate quite a bit for some of the shortcomings we've seen uh, with 1080p panels at this size. And you can't beat the price either. A very good, affordable price for the display that you're looking at here. And it doesn't even have that much glare either. So you're seeing my studio lights reflect in here, but it really isn't that bad. And uh, it's certainly nicer than uh, some of the displays that we saw that had a specific anti-glare coating because on those displays, it really clouded things up quite a bit. So when you're dead center with this, it looks great. Uh, you lose that greatness very quickly when you go off center. But I think for a single desk, single person kind of display, uh, this is a good value and I think checks all the boxes that someone might want out of a budget display. I'm eager to see what a flat version of this would look like in comparison. I may try to see if Samsung offers one and maybe do a comparison. I don't know if this curve adds anything, but uh, the way it is at the moment, I'm really quite pleased with how it looks. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.